Hello everybody, welcome to another tutorial video in our Spring Boot with Angular tutorial series. In this video we are going to be taking a look at some validation. You may have noticed that in our replication it's possible to create vehicles without any number, so the number would be empty, and it's also possible to create uh, vehicles with the same number, so you can duplicate the number. So we, are, we want to fix that. The way we're going to handle it is our annotations on the vehicle entity. So if you go into the backend module or to the vehicle entity, we have this add column with nullable false. So it should already not be possible to create a vehicle with a number uh, which is null, but that doesn't work. The reason for it, uh, why it doesn't work is because in our vehicle component TS file, the vehicle form at the beginning immediately has an empty string. So it's not null, it's just an empty string and we are basically uh, setting that. So to change that, we are going to enter null here. With this, it's not possible to create vehicles without uh, a number, so it, the, an error would appear. Now let's take a look at how we can make this uh, unique. To do that, um, we can reuse our annotation and do this. We are saying now that uh, the number should be unique and in order for this to apply to our database, unfortunately our application property, so this DLL auto update, uh, will not cover it. Uh, we are going to be handling that uh, differently later on anyway, we are going to be using uh, Liquibase for our application, but for now what you need to do is go to your workbench or whatever you are using and either right click alter table and mark this as unique, so the number, or just drop these two tables, so um, select both of them, drop and uh, click apply, and once you have applied that changes and drop the tables, then restart your application, and then at this point it should not be possible to create the vehicles, uh, so the same two vehicles with the same two number. We also want to unit test this because, uh, yeah, maybe somebody messes with our application later on and breaks something and we should be aware of that. So let's create some tests. Let's go to our vehicle service integration test and uh, verify that we are not able to create the v two vehicles with the same number and with a null. So um, let's see what we can do. We can create maybe a new test, the one that tests that it's not possible to create a vehicle with the, where the number is null. So at this uh, point, this should draw an exception. And uh, to verify that, uh, we can use our um, assertions to verify that this actually draws an exception. So uh, here what I'm doing is I'm saying that uh, I want to assert that this code here basically throws an exception and has some message. I uh, do not know exactly which message it is, but when I run the test, it will uh, let me know so we can just uh, assert it. So let's run our test and see what's the outcome uh, of it. So if it passes or if it fails. So our test has uh, failed. Let's see why, what exactly happened. So uh, it's uh, expecting message to be XXX, but was uh, not null property reference a null of transient value, blah, blah. So we can actually uh, copy this part and we can say this and rerun our test and it passes, perfect. So now let's uh, change it. Um, so uh, let's add another test uh, where we are verifying that it's not possible to save two vehicles with uh, same number. So again, we are doing the same thing. Let me run our test. 
um, I've created a one vehicle DTO with some number, so SBA1, and I'm saving it once, and I'm expecting uh, that uh, this code does not throw any exception, which should happen, uh, so we should be able to save it. But then I'm also asserting that this code here, so saving it again, has some message um, and again, I don't know the message, so I'm just uh, waiting for it and it can say uh, it will be here. So it was expecting this, but it actually was could not execute, blah, blah. And we should be able to see it here. Mm. Now let's just uh, do a message. Um, nested exception is good could not execute statement. So this will be the message as message containing. So it should contain this string and let's run it again and see what happens. Perfect, our test passes. So everything is uh, nice and exactly how we want it. Uh, with this being done, um, for our user, when he is running the application, he will not see much. So what he will see is I will click the button to save the entity. For example, he forgot to enter the number and then nothing happens. Um, what we want to do there is we want to actually show some kind of a notification or some error on the front end to notify the user that uh, something actually did happened bad. So for that, uh, let's create a new service. Let's uh, call it uh, error service. In this error service, um, we want to auto wire uh, the WebSocket service. And we also want to um, create a method that will actually send a message. So uh, so like publish an error or display an error or something like that. And to publish this, we are going to be using the WebSocket service. So if we jump to it, you can see that we have this send message, uh, but we can not provide the payload. So that's something that we want to change. We want to create a new um, method here, send message where we have the topic suffix, but we also have final string payload. So there is some payload here. We add it there and we are going to be using that here. So send message, some topic, uh, for example, error, and the payload would be the error message. Then, yeah, this can be final. And that's pretty much it. Now, where we want to do this is if we go to the abstract cradle service in our uh, update entity, I think if we can actually, we can catch it here. So let's do that. Let's auto wire our um, error service. And then let's say here something like we also move this part here and here we are going to be returning null but we are also going to be using our error service dot display error e dot get message so if we put the breakpoint here and actually run our application, I already have the front end running, we should be able to uh, catch this and the error should be sent to the front end. So let's see that. So our application has started. I'm already running the front end. And if I refresh it, you can see that I already have uh, one vehicle. Let's try with a uh, null property. So I click uh, here to create it and you can see that we got here and there is some error message um, that's supposed to be sent to the front end and everything is nice and great. Now what we want to do, so basically with our back end we are done, uh, we want to implement on the front end that an error message, so this pop up that it's displayed. So let's uh, see how we can do that.
So with changes on our backend done, um, we need to focus on the front end now. I've already implemented everything and I will guide you through it step by step what exactly I did. But first, let's take a look at how it looks like. So when we try to create a vehicle without a vehicle number, clicking create, we get this pop up with a title error and this not formatted error message. It doesn't really look nice, but it's something we can uh, work upon. So later on, we can maybe add some custom validation and uh, put some nicer messages. And here also we have this uh, close button so we can close this pop up. Same thing is if we would try already existing vehicle, for example, SAV1. If we try that, uh, it already gives us uh, same message as we logged in the backend that this is a constraint uh, relation exception. Now let us take a look at what exactly did we do. If we go back to our IntelliJ, you can see that uh, in the app module TS, I have added this uh, Met dialog module, uh, which is something uh, that we are using for displaying this message, so this pop-up. And also you can see that I have this error dialog component. So let's take a look at this error dialog component. So we created a new component. Um, I can actually uh, jump to it. So let me just open it up. Uh, let me close all of these things which we do not need. So in the error dialog component, we created a new um, package basically. So this new folder called error. We have an empty CSS file. We have an HTML file. So this is our content of the pop-up. Here we have um, some title. We have uh, the content and we have an action, which is just this close button. And in the TS file, um, so this is something from the Angular uh, material uh, page. We basically copy paste it uh, from there. So we injecting this met dialog data. So with some data and from the data, we are taking a, an error message. I will be explaining now where exactly we do this. The next thing I created is this error service. So this service is uh, taking care of uh, subscribing to our topic and also uh, taking in the response from the topic and opening this dialogue once we get it. So uh, we created a new error service. It's injectable and provided in root. And um, in this um, service, in the constructor, we have the stomp service and we have this dialogue. So it's a met dialogue. So from the Angular material. And there we are uh, have a public method subscribe to errors, which uh, is being called from the um, menu. So I've added it to the menu because we can we always want to be subscribed to these um, errors. So in the menu component, we add to the constructor, we add the error service. So the new one that we created and on in it, we call subscribe to errors. So we are subscribed to all kinds of errors that we get on this topic. Now back to our error service, inside of it, we are using the stomp service to subscribe to the topic we defined in our backend. Then from the response, which is a, a frame that we get from the um, stomp, uh, from the stomp message, we are using the dialogue. So the one that's provided here in the constructor, open method, and we are saying open this dialogue. So this is the component that we uh, took a look here. And the data that we are passing in is uh, just so error message response body. So this error message here is the one that matches here in the um, HTML of the error dialog component. If all of this looks a bit complicated, do not worry. I will uh, provide you a link to the commit where you can see all of the changes. And let's take a look at what else did we change. So we covered the app module, we covered error service, we covered the dialogue component, the menu component, the vehicle component. This is our change which we did um, in the, our backend part. So we changed from um, empty string to null. And also I have added here now a change so that if our response, which can be now null when we are uh, submitting um, to a vehicle, um, so since it can be null, um, we are adding a check so that we don't get any errors when we are uh, logging a message here. So nothing important. Now important things is changes to our stomp service. Since now we have two topics and we want to subscribe to both of them basically at the same time, both of them will try to connect to the stomp client, which is not good. To handle that, we add this uh, topic queue and we add the connecting flag. So the connecting flag will be set when the first topic starts to connect 
and it will be set to true and then we know okay we are currently connecting and the topic queue is used to store all of these uh, objects so topics and callbacks and then later on subscribe to them once we are connected so let's take a look at how it uh, works. Currently, the first uh, one will be the error topic. It will try to subscribe. And then immediately afterwards in our vehicle component, the topic that we already had will also try to subscribe. So it's like a milliseconds difference. What will happen? The error topic will come in here. This will be false and uh, it will just go over it and it will try to connect. And um, while it's being connecting, so it will go here, we set the flag connecting and then we try to connect, which takes some time. But while this is still not done, the other topic came in and it's uh, looking at this, this is now true. So we just add it to the queue. Once it's in the queue, eventually the other topic, so the first one, the error topic will be, uh, the stomp client will connect, we will subscribe to it and then we will take a look at what we have in the queue and for each item that we have we'll take the topic and the callback and also subscribe to them and then we empty the queue one other thing that we could implement maybe here is some kind of a periodical um, checks so maybe every i don't know few seconds that we check if there is something in the queue and then we subscribe to it so that would be one of the nice things that we can do but yeah basically this is it so everything uh, is hopefully clear uh, what we did and uh, if you have any questions or if something is unclear do let me know and I will try to explain it to you so I will see you in the next one